Some designers feel a little bit too limited by Nathan Smith's 960 GS or grid system. Maybe they're not comfortable with the column widths or the gutter spacing, or this tends to be a big one. They're not comfortable with the left and right margins. Or this is another biggie. They're not comfortable with that 940 pixels of horizontal workable space. So at any point in time, you can go and create your own grid system, your own custom grid system, and of course save that as a template and use it over and over and over again for your different layouts that you're building. And your own custom grid system, of course, could be comprised of any number of columns. You can set your own column widths, your own gutter widths, your own margins, and so on. But of course, it's highly recommended to stay within at least a 960 pixel workable horizontal space. We don't want to go any wider than 960. And this, of course, assumes that we're building a fixed width layout. Okay. Now you can stick with a 940, but I always like to go 960 myself anyway. But you can decide which way you want to go and, and set this up. So what I'm going to build here with you is a grid system that's comprised of just three columns. Those three columns are going to be 300 pixels in width. We're going to have two gutters, which are going to be 30 pixels in width. And we'll set up left and right margins as well. The margins, by the way, are optional as well. But we're going to set up our margins, and they're going to be 70 pixels in width. Sound like fun? Let's go and build it. So go ahead and create a new file here inside Photoshop. You can hit Control or Command N or choose File New if you wish. And here's the dimensions that I'm going to use for my custom grid system. I'm going to set up a file that's 1,100 pixels in width by 2,000 pixels in height. I want to give myself lots and lots of vertical space. And then go ahead and click on OK. All right, there's our file. Now, give me a moment here. I'm just going to stretch this guy out so he's filling up my screen. You can go into full screen mode if you want just by tapping your F key on your keyboard. And make sure that your rulers are turned on as well. Control or Command R to toggle your rulers on and off. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to start creating a, a grid almost of guides. And I hope you know about guides inside your, your various graphics applications. I'm not going to go through a whole lesson on how to work with guides. Basically, they're, they're non-printing or, or non-visible lines that are going to help us lay out our, our grids and help us lay out our designs. So I want to create a whole pile of guides for myself here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to head up to the View menu and then all the way down to New Guide. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new vertical guide, and I want to set his position at 70 pixels. OK, go ahead and click on OK. And we should now get a new vertical guide here inside our document, creating this 70 pixel margin on the left-hand side. OK, perfect. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create another vertical guide way over for the right-hand margin. And again, I like to work a little bit more precisely, so I'm going to head back to the View menu, back down to New Guide, and this guy's position is going to be 1,030 pixels. Okay, go ahead and type in 1030, click on OK, and there we go. There's our second guide, thus creating the right-hand margin. Wonderful. Okay, now we have a few more guides that we want to create. I'm just going to zoom in actually quite a bit on sort of this, this top uh, left corner of my, my file. I want to zoom in pretty close here, something like that. And what I want to do is I want to change my ruler orientation. This is kind of a neat trick. And I don't do this too often, but, but this is a, a good excuse to show you this here. Where the two rulers converge, my vertical ruler and my horizontal ruler, where they converge way up in the top left corner, I'm going to grab this square and click and drag him out so I can change my ruler orientation. And all I want to do is I want to drop this guy right onto that guide that you and I created. So now the zero point on my ruler is uh, lined up with that first vertical guide. Okay, wonderful. All right, now as I say, we have a bunch of other guides to create here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to pan over and I'm looking on my ruler, I'm looking for the 300s. There we go, there's our 300s. So what I wanna do is I wanna create two more guides here. I wanna create a vertical guide at 300 and another one over at 330. 
Okay, now you can do this uh, using your, your new guide dialog box if you want, but I changed my ruler orientation. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna bring my cursor into my vertical ruler anywhere along there, click and drag out to create another vertical guide. And I'm gonna drop this guy right at the 300 pixel mark on my horizontal ruler. Wonderful stuff. Let's do one more over at 330. Perfect. Okay, great. All right, two more to go. Now I'm looking for the 600s. So I'm going to continue panning over horizontally all the way over until I'm in the 600s. There we go, somewhere in there. I want to create another one at 630 and a fourth one at 660. So once again, same story, bring your cursor over into the vertical ruler, click and drag out. And I said 630, didn't I? So look for 630, there he is. And then another one at 660. Bring that guy over just like that. Okay, wonderful. So dropping him there at the 660 mark on my, on my horizontal ruler. Didn't quite have that bang on. There we go, something like that. Okay, wonderful. So now if I zoom out just a little bit on my keyboard, Controller Command minus, there we go. There's our three column layout. So once again, we have the three columns, they're 300 pixels in width. We measured it all out. And our two gutters that we have here are 30 pixels wide and then our 70 pixel wide margins on the left and right side, which is great stuff. Now, if you'll recall from Nathan's three Photoshop templates, he had these lovely red columns, which, uh, which was really nice, especially for laying over top of a design. You saw that in the gallery on his website, really, really nice. So if you wanna go and create something like that, we can certainly do that. Let me zoom out all the way out on my file. And here's what I'm gonna do. We're actually gonna make use of a, a vector layer and a layer mask. It's pretty cool stuff. So way down at the bottom of the layers panel, go ahead and click on this icon here, create a new fill or adjustment layer. And I'm gonna go with solid color. Go ahead and choose solid color. And you can choose whatever color you want for your columns. You can stick with the red that we saw in Nathan's templates, or you can go with blue or green or whatever the heck you want. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna stick with red here and click on okay. There we go. Something like that. Now check out my layers panel. We now have this, this fill layer and he also has a vector mask on him. So go ahead and click on this second icon and you'll see this sort of this frame show up around him and then right click on him and choose delete layer mask. Go ahead and do that. Okay, perfect. All right. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I actually want to create my columns here. And you know, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. Here's how I'm going to pull this off for myself is over inside the toolbox, I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee tool, or as normal human beings say, the rectangular selection tool. Go ahead and grab that guy. And then from the options bar across the top where it says style, switch that guy to fixed size. All right. And then we get width and height fields showing up there. And I'm going to go and set my dimensions for my columns. So my columns are going to be 300 pixels wide by 2000 pixels in height. How do I know 2000 pixels? Because that's what we created the original file using, right? So there we go, something like that. Okay. And then with my marquee tool, my selection tool, usually what I do, let me just zoom in a little bit here. I'll show you. I'm going to try and click right up against the edge of this, of this first guide. That's what I'm, that's what I'm after, right? So let me zoom back out and right in there somewhere, right there, go ahead and single click, bang. There's our marching ants right in there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert this selection to a layer mask. So to do that, I'm gonna head up to the layer menu and then down to layer mask and I'm gonna choose reveal selection. Bang, there's our first column. Awesome. Okay, so now we only have two more columns to go here. Sorry, I get excited about the simple things in life. So same story. So let's see, I'm gonna go over one guide and then over one more guy, because that's the gutter there, right? And I'm going to drop my cursor right in here. And I find it easiest to bring my cursor off of the canvas just a little bit, like just a little bit. There we go. Something like that. Okay, wonderful. Now what I want to do, we already have a layer mask created. So now what I want to do is I want to take this selection. This sounds kind of crazy if you've never worked with masking in Photoshop, but I want to fill this guy with white. So do me a favor, tap the D key on your keyboard, just D all by itself. Just tap D.
and then hold down for our Windows users, hold down Alt, for Mac users, hold down Option, and hit your backspace or your delete key on your keyboard, and that will fill the selection with red. Wonderful. Let's do this one more time for the third column. Same story, bring your cursor over to the appropriate guide, just off the top edge of the canvas, single click, bang, there's your selection. Hold down Alt or Option, delete or backspace. Fills that guy with red. Wonderful stuff. Go ahead and deselect Control or Command D. You can go back to your Move tool inside your toolbox by tapping the V key. And let's see here, everything's looking wonderful. I'm gonna rename my layer perhaps, rather than Color Fill 1, double click on that and I'll call this Columns. There we go. And what else? Let's drop down the opacity, maybe all the way down to, oh, let's say, maybe 15, maybe 10, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever works for you there. Maybe I'll bring mine up just a little bit more, just so you can see this on screen a little bit better. There we go, something like that, that's fine. And then maybe I'll take this, this columns layer that we created and I'll lock them down by clicking on that lock icon. So he's not gonna move or change or anything like that. Voila, there's our custom three column grid system. Very cool stuff. By the way, a really quick aside, just while I think of it, is if you wanted to increase your margins on the left and right sides of your layout, if you wanted perhaps a little bit more elbow room, or maybe while you're wireframing things out, you wanna simulate how this would look on a widescreen monitor, something like that, what you can always do is you can adjust your canvas size. Give this a try. Control Alt or Command Option and then C on your keyboard. Or you can go up to your image menu and then look for canvas size. And what I wanna do here is I can adjust the width of my canvas. I wanna make sure that my anchor point though is in one of these center columns, like perhaps the top center, something like that. And then my width, I could change that to whatever I want, maybe 1200 pixels or 1500 pixels, whatever you want. Go ahead and click on OK and what happens is the overall width of our layout expands off of the right and left sides, something like that, okay? Very cool stuff. All right, so I hope that's working for you. I hope you had fun here with me. I wanna show you one more quick thing here. Give me just a moment. I'm just gonna do this on screen here. Once again, just like I was showing you the available column widths that we had for uh, Nathan Smith's 12 column grid system, we just did that. I did the same here for our three column custom grid. So let me show you the file here. I'll just pop this guy open. There we go, let me zoom in here. So what we have available to us in terms of available widths, hopefully we can, there we go, get this all in on screen. So this is what's possible with a three column grid. So we can go the full 960 if we want, right across the entire screen. Again, a header, a footer, a menu, something like that. We can go with a 300 pixel column or a 630 pixel column or we could go 300, 300, and 300 right across, which is lovely. Or we could do the opposite to the first one, the 630, which is again, spanning two columns in one gutter, or just a 300 pixel column. Okay, there you go. Lots of cool stuff, lots of fun. But don't forget, this is just my example of creating a three column grid system. You can create whatever the heck you want. Six columns, 10 columns, eight columns, whatever combination you wanna work out, you just have to stay within that maximum width of 960.